your butt is entirely covered in clay. Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? Today I wanted to do something a little bit special. Now it is about a month before Christmas while I'm laying this out. And today I wanted to do the five things that most potters want for Christmas. Let's face it, you most likely don't know what your friend wants for Christmas. You probably have no idea. What is this? Christmas hats. I don't like Christmas hats. I don't care. I don't celebrate Christmas. I'm just gonna... Nope! Get back here! If I have your arms, you can't put it on me. Shh, maybe just a bit. Well, I guess my girlfriend is going to be joining us for this video, and I guess I'm gonna be wearing a... Christmas hat. Tuck it up. Today we're going to talk about the five things that most potters want for Christmas. Now, just to get this out of the way, we're not going to include a wheel, we're not going to include a kiln for obvious reasons, some of which I will go over now. Getting a kiln requires a lot of work. You have to check the electricity and the ampage in your house. You probably, if you're having it in your garage or somewhere inside your house, you have to go ahead and get a plug that actually takes that amount of ampage and outputs that amount of ampage. Then you have to figure out where to put the kiln, and if you're getting a wheel, you can't exactly sneak that under the Christmas tree. So we're gonna save those big ticket items for stuff that you're probably gonna buy yourself because they take a lot of thought and time to decide what you want. But today, we're gonna go across the things that most potters would like to have, even if they're in a classroom, if they're homestead potters, or some of them are for potters that have been potters for quite some time, but just kinda never thought about these things. I came prepared, I made a list. Did you? I checked it twice. And for this list, we're going over stuff that is usable. I don't mean stuff that you're gonna buy for your friend that's nice and kitschy and decoration for their studio and oh my god look it's so cute but they put it in their closet and they never ever use it again. These are all fairly functional items. Most potters or at least functional potters buy stuff that they need to use on a weekly if not daily basis. So this is gonna be stuff that actually helps most ceramic artists in their studio. Um please hold the list. Thank you. First thing on the list that most potters want, even if they don't know they want it for Christmas, is a clay pan. Now, I happen to be wearing one <laughs> that got dust on her. I'm sorry. I happen to be wearing one right now, and I actually have a pretty good one. Here's how the cycle usually goes. When you first become a potter, or even when you get into ceramic art class, you realize that you'll be going throughout the day after your class doing something else. And you'll be in your civvies, your normal clothes. That means you don't want to get your clothes dirty. So what do you do? You go out and find an apron. Heck, you probably don't even know that clay aprons are sold, let alone they have their own word called a clay apron. So you get like one from your old job at Starbucks or Jamba Juice or and you get an old t-shirt or you get one from the kitchen that says like world's best dad and you just get that tiny piece of cheesecloth dirty the entire time. It doesn't really protect you from anything, but potters have long had this problem and they figure kind of a little workaround by just making it out of a better material in the form of a clay apron. Now I have a clay apron on here, but I have kind of the special version where I just have like chaps and mine go all the way down to my pant leg. They actually cover my pants. These are kind of the expenso ones, but they're actually not that expensive. These will actually run you about 30 to 35 dollars, and I know for sure because I have one around here somewhere. I actually have one right here from Laguna. This ran me about 25 dollars, and the one that I'm wearing right now is actually Clayburn brand. If you look close enough, mine actually says Clayburn on it. The Laguna brand one is a little bit different. Some of them, like this, come with little flappy flaps, like this. You just steal my word. Yeah, stole your word. <laughs> but this one doesn't have the individual pants. This is just kind of like a straight apron. Well, mine protects my pants individually. I have kind of this 
split down the middle of my, I probably shouldn't be showing you guys that. It lets you spread your legs around the wheel. It lets you spread your legs around the wheel. While protecting your clothes. Oh, she's so smart. I love her so much. She goes <laughs> off on tangents and sometimes forgets the actual point. That is very true. But trust and believe, if you got your Potter friend one of those, they would wear it almost every single time they throw. You can get one of these clay aprons from Amico, from Laguna, I'm pretty sure the big ceramic store, the online shop that it's affiliate with me. You can get them from them. Uh, I got mine at Alpha Fired Arts, which is a shop in Sacramento. They're really, really easy to find. I don't know if Amazon has them. Last time I looked, they didn't have the Clapron brand Clapron, but they do have aprons for crafters. Either way, this I is a- I am looking and they do have one with split like this. There we go. They go down farther than yours. Oh, hold on, let's, let's not get, let's not get, let's, there's not, it's nothing better than a clipper. This is one of those gifts that not only will they really appreciate, but they will use on an everyday basis. It's not something that they'll just put away and think it's cute and re-gift it, you know how that goes. They'll actually use it on a daily basis. The second thing on the list are pottery tools. Now I know what you're thinking. Dante, my friend already has pottery tools. He doesn't need more pottery tools, he already has pottery tools. Let me explain real quick. When you first get into ceramic artwork, there's this packet of ceramic art tools. The bottom line being, that beginner pack of ceramic art tools is literally just to get you started. Over time, you're supposed to buy yourself more tools and higher quality tools. So the tools that look like this and come in this package right here, those are tools that you really shouldn't be using for a longer amount of time. After a certain amount of time, especially if you reach the intermediate phases of ceramic artwork, you'll find out that there's a higher grade of these tools that are made of black carbon steel. They cut better, they keep their edge a lot better, but the thing is they're a little bit expensive. You see this tool in my hand? I'll put a little picture up here for you so you can see it closer. This is a tool for mud tools, and it's a multi-trim tool, meaning that it trims, I burnish my pots with it sometimes, it has the pear shape on one side, it has that little hook that some potters like to use to trim on the other side, I make lines with it with the corners, it does a bunch of stuff. You've probably seen me use it before in plenty of my videos. But this one tool right here, made of black carbon steel, very easy to sharpen with a Dremel tool, and it'll run you about $20. Believe me when I tell you, this one tool is worth the entire packet of beginner tools. And if you don't like this thing and this doesn't strike your fancy, you can always just buy a higher grade of the pear trim tool that comes in this set of beginner tools in the first place. I'll put a picture of mine up on screen for you. But this is just simply a higher quality of tool. But catch is it costs a little bit more. These kind of tools aren't really meant to be used or bought in one big package like that, like they would sell the other ones. These are kind of meant to be sold one by one and added to your collection as you start to use them. Trust and believe me, at one time I had maybe like 10 of those little trim tools that are made of straight silver or straight steel, whatever they're made out of. Probably 10 or something. Yeah, they're probably 10. The point is that they're not very good metals and I ended up buying one after another after another almost every single month. If you're someone like me who does ceramic artwork almost on a daily if not other day basis, you want higher quality tools and not many people know you can get them in a higher quality black carbon steel version that'll last you a lot longer, it works a lot better and it actually makes a really good gift. This seems like something really small until you hand a potter one of these and they're like oh I have one of these except for mine's not black and made of a weird metal and then they use it and you'll you'll be getting a call from them the next day yo where'd you get that tool i want all of my tools to be like that from now on all all of them the I, fuck are you shouting at me for i love you if i were to give any of you a suggestion right now i would say just shell out the 20 bucks for this multi-faceted trim tool right here this trim tool from mud tools does like 12 different things and has replaced most of my tools. I usually just work with a pin tool, a metal rib, and this tool right here whenever I'm actually trimming or working on my stuff. Side note, that does include sponges as well. Most pottery kits come with a little sponge they have you buy like this chunk sponge. You don't really need that. You can actually buy sponges from mud tools that are higher quality as well. They feel better, but it's like a three or four dollar sponge, which is kind of a lot of money for a sponge but it's not a lot of money for a Christmas gift for that potter that you love. Gift number three. You're a gift number three. I'm your gift number three. Gift number three is basically a potter's lazy Susan. I actually have one. Here, let me get mine. I feel like you should have just had like these in a pile next to you. You're in a pile! Excuse you. 
Now here's the thing, you probably have this Potter friend of yours and they probably glaze one of three ways. They probably use a pressure sprayer or an air sprayer, which means they have the facility to have an air sprayer, so they probably know what they're doing. You have somebody who makes their own glaze and holds them in giant buckets, much like I do, and they kind of have their set of glazes and they know exactly how they like their glaze, and they already paint them on and all that, and it's all good. Most of the time, those potters usually dip their glazes. Or, you have the beginner potter, who usually paints their glazes on with a brush. And that means they either use their wheel, or they use some type of Lazy Susan. Here's the thing, you're gonna get this great idea to buy them a Lazy Susan, basically, which we in the Potter world call a banding wheel. Here's the thing, you're gonna get this idea to buy them a banding wheel, and it's gonna be great. It's gonna work for like two weeks, and then it's gonna start to die on you. And you're gonna hear the ball bearings every time it spins, and you probably found it for like 10 or 20 dollars on Amazon, and you thought it was the greatest idea, and it wasn't good. It died on me in like two weeks. It really wasn't that great, and I wish I would have just bought one of these in the first place. Keep in mind, he breaks everything. He's very rough on things. I'm rough in general. This right here is a banding wheel from Shimpo. You can only imagine, hear that as it spins? No, you don't. That's because it's a good banding wheel. Now granted, it's not that 10 or $20 one that you're probably gonna buy off Amazon.com to go ahead and do your pottery for a couple weeks until it dies on you, right? But I'd much rather have one of these and shell out the close to 80 to $90 that it would actually take to get a good, functioning, high quality, long lasting banding wheel than keep buying a couple of those Lazy Susans that are probably made of plastic and from China over and over and over again. I really mean it when I say this thing actually changed my life. This is a Shimpo brand one, but most clay companies, probably most online stores, actually sell this as well. This one will run you somewhere around $70 to $80 depending on which one you buy. I do know there's a very high quality one that's over $100, I almost bought it, but this one ran me about $70 or $80. Bucks. Trust and believe me when I say that I have never seen one of these break in my entire life. And when I was in class and glazing my stuff, guess how much of a distraction I caused? None with this. I mean, I caused a distraction, but like it, it wasn't because of this. That's just his personality. It's just my personality. This makes a fantastic gift. This is also kind of a one-time buy thing. If you buy one of these for your potter friend, or even for yourself, if you're a potter and you, you know you're not really buying gifts for anybody else, but you got you got to treat yourself sometime. I completely understand. I, in fact, bought this one for myself, and I don't regret it. Just li listen, just... It's beautiful. Gift number four is kind of a larger buy. You see, all the things that I've been naming inside of this video have been like a max of 80 bucks at the most, and they're not that expensive. But there are things that you use every single day, or at least your Potter friend will use every single day. Tell me if you've heard this story before, or even if you're this person, right? You're a Potter, and you don't make your own glazes. You like to buy your glazes, because they're more stable, they're more dependable, you like to mix them around. That's probably why my last glaze review video was so popular, because people want to see how glazes come out right after they're done buying them, right? Or you're that guy who like buys 12 glazes and then you put five on the shelf and they dry out and you only really used a couple of them. Okay. Here's the thing, if you're a potter or you have a friend who's a potter who loves a specific glaze, they won't shut up about it. Like mine is Firebrick Red from Amico, right? From Potter's Choice Amico. This is a great thing to buy for them. Don't buy them little tiny bottles. Don't do this. You can actually contact Amico or Coyote or Laguna whoever makes the glaze that your friend likes and buy it in big powdered form. All you gotta do is go to Home Depot, get like a 10 gallon bucket. But these glazes come in pints, which means you or your friend is buying these over and over and over again. If you're buying these over and over again, say these cost about 20 bucks per pint, and you bought like five of them and they're $20 each, $100 runs you five pints. That's not that great compared to the price that they're gonna sell you Prepackaged. You see, the company doesn't have to go out through all this business of mixing this stuff for you, bottling it up, paying for the bottle because that does cost, shipping it to you. Well, they still gotta ship it to you. But they don't have to do all the extra work to combine it with water and put all the stuff in it and put it in a bottle and weigh it out. They just give you the powdered form and you do all that. Which means that you or your potter friend can buy your favorite glaze or your friend's favorite glaze 
in bulk. All you have to do is go to the company's website and literally just buy the powder form of whatever glaze they sell. I promise you, they'll probably sell it and it'll be a lot cheaper than buying bottles and bottles of that glaze. Now your friend has their favorite glaze like 20 times over. This one's more of a bigger buy because you essentially have to go get a bucket, probably from Home Depot, buy like a little two or three gallon bucket, and then you can give this glaze to your friend. It's a lot cheaper, they can mix themselves, they can control the water content, and you don't waste money buying little tiny bottles and you don't have this waste of bottles that uh, hopefully you recycle left over. You can just buy them a giant bag of the powdered form. It's much cheaper, and now your friend has all their favorite glaze in powdered form. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Someone did this for me one time. It was Hyacinth and I loved that glaze. I used it for like a year straight. Also, I had a friend of mine try and do this for me for a glaze that they wanted me to use, but I felt so bad because they bought so much of it that I pretty much just ended up making pottery in their favorite color, even though it wasn't my favorite color. You can't make everything your favorite color. I'd make everything my favorite color care about other people's colors. For example, it's kind of sneaky, but like, if you like the color green, and your friend doesn't like the color green, but you bought them a big powder bag of green, guess what color the pottery they're gonna make is gonna be from now on, I'm just saying. What he's saying is if you have a potter friend who only likes three colors, buy them something adventurous, and they are forced to step outside of their comfort zone. I feel attacked. Thing number five, and the, the number one thing that I think would make a great gift for every potter who does not already have this to have, it's gonna sound stupid, okay? It's gonna sound weird, work with me here, is a pottery stool. I should probably elaborate instead of just sitting back like this as if you know what I'm talking about. See, here's the thing. In ceramic art class, when you go to your college or high school, they usually have these stools. The stools usually look like this. I'm sorry, I'm gonna put it on a picture of you. But now it just looks like a really attractive stool, to be honest. I'm kind of into it. The stool looks like this, and the stool is made for a specific reason. It's kind of four-pronged, right? And it has a ring at the very bottom of it. This ring is specifically made for us potters to get height on our pottery, right? So we sit like this, it allows us to hunch over while still keeping our stability, and the majority of these stools are at height with the wheel. But what most people don't understand is that the ring allows us to put one foot up like this, which changes our positioning from here to here, which gives us about four or five inches of height into our pot and a lot more stability. You guys don't see this in my videos, but half the time I'm making taller cylinders, my feet and my legs are put in this ring right here like this because this is a lot better than this. I have to crimp my hand a little bit more to reach deeper in my pot. But this, I have the high ground, Anakin. You really don't like Star Wars. Yeah, I'm a Star Trek boy. Find me in the comments below. That one is specifically from Ikea and it was $50 and came in black and then the natural. That's the natural. But here's the major point, right? When I first started building my own studio, I wanted one of these stools so, so badly. I was like, babe, we gotta get one of these stools. Help me find this stool. I called Alpha Fire and Arts, I called a couple clay companies, and I said, hey, you know those potter stools like every potter uses? And they're like, Psh, yeah, we make buku dollars off selling those every year. I said, can I get one of those? And they said, yeah, sure. It, what was it, like $200? It was close to like $200. It was a lot of money for this stool. And I was like, Okay, well, because you guys are the only ones that I know that sell it and I can't find it anywhere else, I'll be there to give you $200 for a literal three-foot stool. And then he told me, and as mentioned before, I'm a much better shopper and found one that was almost the same for like a quarter of the price. I told her, and she looked on Ikea's website, and not only did she find pretty much the same exact stool for like, what, one-fourth of the price? She also found one that goes up and down. I don't know if you can see it, but you can actually raise this stool up and down. So if you're a little bit taller, you can have a little bit more height. If you're a little shorter, you can, you know, you, you can just adjust it how you want. The pottery stools inside of most studios, especially in classrooms, don't have this capability. But I basically just paid, what were you, $50 at the most? Yeah, I went and got it, yeah, it was $50. It was like 50 bucks for this stool and I got it from Ikea. I will try and see if I can find the name of this stool so you can put it in the Ikea website and just get one yourself. Honestly, I looked before this and I just searched stool 
and it was one of the first that popped up. There you go. Now you can stop using your kitchen chair. Now you can stop using your computer chair or the old chair that your mom has in the closet or something like that. You need a proper stool, but not my dirty potters. I don't want you guys paying $200 for a stool. That's highway robbery, all right? Wobbery. I said wobbery, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it's ceramic wobbery. <laughs> I want you guys to just go to Ikea and buy yourselves a regular stool. There is no, there's no way I'm paying $200. Except for you were going to. Except for I was going to. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly see way too many potters on like chairs with awful backs from their old kitchen tables and they're using extra chairs to put their stuff on and whatnot. Like you don't, you don't need all that, right? You could just go get a stool that is the same height as your wheel that is basically made specifically for you to sit kind of laterally with your wheel, right? If you're sitting here, I mean, you're the clay, okay? I'm gonna sit here. If you're sitting right here and you're centering, you don't, you don't need to be way up here centering your clay like this. It's not good. It's not good for your back. Shh, your clay. It's not good for your back. You need to be right here with a straight back, okay? Form is everything. You're a really attractive piece of clay. Thanks. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, that one was less of a your potter friend needs this and more of a you should have already had it, but if you don't have it, please don't get jebated by a place that wants you to pay quadruple the price for a literal stool. I refuse to have that done to you. How dare you? Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. I hope that this list helped you guys out. I'm probably gonna release it like a month before Christmas. So if you're someone who's thinking about buying a present for your Potter friend, or you know what, if you just wanna treat yourself, I do it every Christmas. I don't really celebrate Christmas. Selfish? Yeah. I'm gonna let this video out real soon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if there's just some things that I mentioned in this video that you were like, I didn't even know that existed, I have to buy one now. Go ahead, get yourself one of those. Go ahead, get your friend one of those. Hopefully you guys really like this video. I really just wanted to help you guys out for Christmas. And if you guys are doing some online shopping, we actually have an affiliate with the channel. Big Ceramic Store is technically a sponsor of ours. They gave us a discount code in case you guys wanna use that to keep your wallet a little bit heavier. We're not sponsoring this video with them. They don't even know that I'm mentioning them in this video, but I will let you guys know that like, you could save a couple shackles with them if you happen to go there. A shekel, it's uh, like a dollar, but it's a half dollar. It's 50, a shekel is 50 cents. Sure. I'm not sure whatsoever. I <laughs> made that number up on the spot. <laughs> but thank you, Dirty Products, for joining us today. If you want to see any of my artwork, my Instagram and my Facebook fan pages down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. I hope you guys have a very good Christmas. We're not going to be releasing an episode on Christmas. This is going to be your Christmas episode. But hopefully you guys have a fantastic Christmas. I hope your next kiln load comes out. Fantastic. By the way, little Potter tip, if you're planning on making any gifts for to give people, right, make sure you do it now. Like now is the time to start making those gifts. It takes a month for me to fill my kiln and then a little while more to glaze my stuff and put it in my kiln, right? So I know some of you procrastinators out there are like, I'm gonna give everybody in my family a mug. You better not. You better not start in two weeks. Christmas is coming up. Kwanzaa Hanukkah is coming up. Merry Birthmas, and I will see you Dirty Potters next week. Finger guns is my goodbye guns. Bye. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic Christmas. I hope your next kill- And Hanukkah. Are we doing all the denominations? I only know about Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. That's about what I know this time. Yeah, I know Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and Christmas. And I'm not even Christian. I just... Yeah. It's just bread and I us. just like shiny things and lights. We're American. We're sorry.